Giancarlo Stan is living a lucid dream. This is what his Instagram bio says, and it is exactly what he does with his life. While you may have dreamed about going to Egypt, Stanton has been a pharaoh. He's a man that loves to travel the world, but who also dresses like his mom. Here's the insane lifestyle of Giancarlo Stanton. So we're going to do something different today. We're going to show you his amazing penthouse first because we are so excited about this particular detail and because we want to show you how he gets to relax and refresh before amazing us on the field. Stanton probably has the most stylish and luxurious apartment in the whole of the MLB. After putting pen to paper for the Miami Marlins in 2014 to become the first player ever in any sport to sign a contract worth over $300 million, it took him just three years to acquire this eye-popping condo. It was listed as $6.6 million by the Wall Street Journal, but when it was finally purchased by Stanton, who was represented by Ben Moss and John Fincher of Compass, the price was not disclosed. Stanton's apartment is part of a 53-story condo that would look like the Statue of Liberty had a facelift and was placed on water. It's a lovely triplex building with panoramic views of Miami Beach, the skyline of the city, and... Biscayne Bay. This alone is great, but what's even greater is Stan's apartment is located on the top three floors like the king of the whole building. His unit spans around 4,800 square feet with an astonishing 3,000 square feet of outdoor space and is a five-bedroom penthouse with private elevators, seven baths, private spa that comes with massage treatment rooms, a library, a gym, a bar, a game room, and a screening room. There's also a rooftop terrace with its summer kitchen and outdoor pool. And if Stanton ever feels like handling business while at home, he has a business office and other facilities equipped for meetings. And with his over $300 million contract, Stanton could own a private jet to fly him about, especially to away games and vacations. He could even run for governor of Florida if he wants to. He could also own a yacht and several cars, but according to HotCars.com, Stanton only drives a Maserati Cadillac. And for someone who is the seventh highest paid player in the MLB at one time, he's not as extravagant as you would expect, especially when it comes to his lifestyle. He once said in an interview with DuJour magazine that he's inspired by his mom's fashion sense, stating that, I get my style from my mom. She's always rocking some nice outfits. Some athletes are all about labels, Gucci and Fendi down. They like to put their money into it, but you don't need money to have style. I go to TJ Maxx and Marshalls. I don't forget where I came from. And then speaking about what he preferred a woman to wear to catch his eyes, he said, quote, one thing a woman needs in terms of an outfit to catch my eye is just don't be scared of what you're wearing. Rock it well, and I love the attitude. Makes you wonder if Stanton has yet to meet any woman that rocks her outfit with a confident attitude because as far as we know, the Yankees outfield is yet to be married or in any serious relationship. However, there was a time he was in a relationship with a popular model, Chase Carter, but that ended in 2019. Then in July 2022, following the All-Star Game, rumors of him dating a 29-year-old actress started to flow around. Stanton did not only win MVP honors at the All-Star Game, but seemed to have won himself a hot woman as well. Her name is Priscilla Quintana, and the rumor said that they had been in the club together and that Priscilla had posted about Stanton's MVP award to her Instagram story with a love emoji. She was also seen wearing a Yankees face cap during her trip to Cape Town, South Africa. Could this be the start of something great? I guess time will tell. But Priscilla and Stan seem to match very well in the department of going on vacation because Stan also enjoys making trips around the world, especially when he's faced a setback. Do you guys remember the surprising defeat the Yankees suffered in 2021 in the American League wildcard game against the Boston Red Sox, which ended 6-2? Well, that terrible loss had pushed Stanton to take a break in the luxurious city of Dubai. And he confirmed it when he said via NJ.com, quote, I've always loved seeing unique places and Dubai has always been on my bucket list. I just wanted to get away. Dubai has the biggest buildings, the tallest, everything. The whole place feel like it's over the top. Something I had to see for myself. The most important thing is you get no special treatment there. A couple of people recognized me, but not very many. I was just one of everyone. I was able to blend in. You have to adapt to the local culture, which is a good thing. But Dubai is not the only place he's been to to wind up. He's also been to Brazil, and the historic photo of himself dressed as a pharaoh when he went to Egypt is still fresh in our minds. There's also another time track back in 2012 after his team had had an abysmal season. 
He chose to take a trip to Europe. He wasn't alone this time around. He went to Madrid with Ozzy Guillen, who was later fired as the manager of the Marlins. Then he also went around with pitcher Ricky Nolasco, who thankfully didn't get fired from anything. They visited places like Amsterdam, Barcelona, Paris, and London. While a lot of people recognized Ricky in Spain, nobody knew who Stanton was, and you know why? Well, like Stanton said, quote, we went to a soccer game with him and we went to dinner and hung out in the daytime a little bit. Everyone knows him there. He goes there every year at his favorite dinner spot and stuff. They all were cool to us. And besides from people knowing who Ricky was, no one cared about the MLB or even the NFL. It was mostly soccer, soccer, soccer. So Stan decided to go see a few games which he enjoyed and spoke highly of when he said, you always hear about that stuff, but it's cool to be able to experience it live. Watching it on TV doesn't do justice to how crazy it is in the stadium. But before they left for home and where MLB is revered, they went to see the Eiffel Tower and other interesting places. Stan has also declared that he would love to visit Australia, the Philippines, Thailand, New Zealand, and more. And aside from visiting somewhere unique, Stan also enjoys the feeling of being anonymous in a strange country. This interest in diverse countries may be due to its ancestry. His maternal great-great-grandmother was a Puerto Rican, which makes him a Puerto Rican. He's also African-American from his mother's side and of Irish descent from his father's. His father is Mike Stanton and his mother is Jacinta Gray, who they had divorced when Stanton was just eight years old. Here's an interesting story for you. Growing up in Los Angeles, California as a diehard Dodgers fan, Giancarlo, who was christened Giancarlo Cruz Michael Stanton on November 8th, 1989, just to go by a different name. He got rid of Cruz and Giancarlo and shortened Michael to Mike. He thought Giancarlo was too hard to pronounce and hence decided to be addressed by Mike Stanton in fifth grade. He confirmed this when he said, no one could pronounce it right. Everyone thought it was two words. Jean Carlo, Juan Carlo, Giancarlo. You have seven periods in school, so seven times a day. No, that's not the name. Everyone knew him as Mike Stanton during high school when he played three sports, baseball, basketball, and football. Then when he got into the minor leagues, the name stayed with him. He'd been enrolled by the Florida Marlins and forfeited going to college to collect a signing bonus in almost half a million dollars. While he continued to bear the name of his father, he shook the minor leagues with earth-shattering performances that saw him rank at number 16 in the top 100 prospects list of Baseball America in 2009. It was after this time that manager Phil Wellman told the Florida Times Union that Stanton looked like a 15-year-old playing in an 8-year-old Little League team. He was that dominant and had made an eye-popping record by hitting a homer that traveled an estimated 500 to 550 feet to clear the scoreboard in center field. He entered the major league with his momentum and ended it by being named as an outfielder in the MLB All-Rookie First Team the 2010 season. Continued to bear Mike Stanton even though his official name and one he signed on legal documents was still John Carlos Stanton. While his mom still addressed him as Cruz. His relatives called him Mikey, his dad Mike, and his Marlins teammates called him Bigfoot. But something happened. After spending two years in the major league, Mike Stanton went on a trip to Europe and came back to proclaim that henceforth he would want to be addressed by the name he was born with. Whether you find it hard to pronounce Giancarlo is now a headache of yours, and his return to his original name had sort of done a lot of good for him because after that declaration, the season that followed was a really good one for him. His confidence had tripled on the field. He was called to his first ever All-Star game. He hit the longest home runs of the season with 494 in Coors Field and 462 in Marlins Park. He also went ahead to represent the United States of America in the World Baseball Classic in both 2013 and 2017. He would have also represented Puerto Rico, but his connections according to investigations, were too far back on his mother's lineage. If you enjoyed this video about Giancarlo Stanton, check out the video on the screen now, or the one we posted below, because we're sure you'll like that one too. See you there.